This video is a remake of a previous video I made one year ago. I recently looked back at this video to mark one year of making content on YouTube, and one thought ended up going through my head. I could do that so much better now. We're at now. So for everybody watching, please enjoy The Art of the Rotate. All right, boys, we gotta get in the zone. Uh, we like two teams ahead of us. They're holding us on these two chokes. We gotta get past them somehow and get in the zone. How do we do that? Let's go the long way around. And die to the ring? No way. We could just fly over them instead, you know? The jump tower won't go far enough, and I don't think we have any evacs. Okay, well, our last option is to fight them. I can't really do that either. What? what? Well, uh, I don't know. They're both controller teams. I'm on MNK, dude. I mean, I guess. You know, I mean, no come idea. on now. I mean, yeah, I mean, what do we do? so, uh, what do we do? Ever been in this situation? Stuck outside the ring, blocked on all entrances with no idea what to do from here? You're not alone. Thousands suffer from outer ring itis every year, and you too can recover from it. With three payments of $29.99.99, I can take you from wannabe legend to apex legend. Hey, what, what are you doing? Oh shit, where are you going? Hey, hey, get back here! <sighs> One of the hardest FPS games to learn today has to be Apex Legends. It's a shooter that demands a lot more mechanically from its players than your average shooter. Don't believe me? Here's a few of the skills you need to master. Just a few. But I believe that the hardest part of learning Apex isn't the mechanics, but the greater parts that decide whether or not you can win a game of Apex. The macro. The biggest decisions you make at the very start of the game that lay out what that match of Apex is going to be. It's oftentimes the most vital decision you can make in a game, but most people playing Apex don't put any thought into it. And at the very core of the macro is one simple concept that every player has done in their games. The rotate. Now what is a rotate? Okay, this wasn't funny. I'm sorry. No, no, it's not your fault. Do you want me to do it again? No, no, just cut to the next scene. The rotate is defined by the path you take to get into the ring in a match of Apex. The moment you step out of your landing spot and into the world around you. Every move you make from here, that is your rotate. And it often is the most important part of a match. But how do you rotate well? What is there to know? How do you know if you're doing something wrong? It can be hard to learn and even harder to master. But today, let's break down the basics of everything you need to know to rotate in Apex. So let me quickly reintroduce myself. Hi. I'm Moreover, and today, please join me as we learn about the art of the rotate. So, where do we start? Guess we can just hop into a game and... Whoa, whoa, slow down there, champ. You're planning on rotating blind? You gotta learn a few things first. Most importantly, what's going to be your drop spot? If we're going to land on a map, we better know where we're going to be. Every map in Apex has points of interest, or towns that are built for at least one team to be able to land at and loot. It's better to land at these than, well, whatever this is. Drop spots are very important in Apex. You are setting up how your game will be played from the very moment you leave the ship. How you move, how you fight, everything can be decided from the very moment you get into the air. They are so important, in fact, that the competitive scene for Apex has an entirely different system in place to allow teams to draft their POIs before a tournament match, so they know exactly where they can land. Really, all that means is that it's best to land at a landing spot you know, and a location that you aren't contested in. The contest part is pretty straightforward. While it can be fun to get into a bit of action off the drop, Contests, or landing with two or more teams at one location, add a layer of randomness to a game that generally throws rotations out the window when you have to focus on a team knocking on your door. Removing that problem makes planning your rotates far easier. Seriously, get off my lawn! Knowing your landing spot is the far more meaty topic. You need to have an understanding of what your POI's strengths and weaknesses are as a location to play from before you can even make a solid strategy. This is because POI's aren't made equally and some offer advantages that others can't compete with. It's a lot like dating. You build a relationship with your POI, learn about their skills and character, then find out their freaky red flags and hide in the bathroom until your friend bails you out of there. Once you've built a relationship you're willing to go long term with, then you can start thinking about the playstyle you'll use from that landing spot. There are two extremes to the playstyles used in Apex that affect how you rotate. 
Edge and Zone. Zone is a playstyle characterized by one word, positioning. Its focus is finding the best spot inside of the ring and getting there as early as possible, gaining points by reliably reaching the endgame and holding game-winning positions. Zone favors POIs with fast looting times, or centralized locations that let you get to a lot of places quickly, such as Overlook, Cascade Falls, or Draft Point. On the opposite end, we have Edge, a playstyle described by the word fighting. Your goal in a match is to build up your resources early to fight teams in the mid to late game, gaining points by bullying teams out of positions and picking up kills throughout the match. This playstyle prefers a landing spot that sets it up with good loot to build off of, and doesn't need to prioritize a good location. Thermal Station, Lightning Rod, or Phase Driver are all good examples of POIs that favor Edge. These two playstyles are the two ends of the spectrum of strategies in Apex, but there's plenty of nuance to discuss between them. Hybrid playstyles are plentiful in Apex, favoring part of either extreme to whatever level fits best for your team, and you don't have to sit squarely in one playstyle for an entire tournament or play session. That's why it's so important to know your POI, that way you know all the ways you can play from it. We might know all of that now, but before we drop, let's also talk about the loot qualities and how to properly prepare for your- Dude, get out of the dropship! What? No, 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 we haven't even finished our theories yet! We can't jump into the game until we know all about- Ugh. Okay, so maybe you can't learn everything from outside the game. But now that we're here, where should we start? Oh shit. As soon as you hit the ground in an Apex game, a clock has started for you and your team. Assuming you're not contested. The looting clock. The amount of time it takes you to loot a POI decides a lot in a game. If you take too long to get your loot, you'll find yourself at the front of a traffic jam where the commuters behind you aren't likely to put on the brakes. If you haven't gotten used to it yet, break off your Jumpmaster at the start of the drop and land separately to maximize your time spent looting. And as you get more accustomed to a POI, you start building out a looting path you can reliably take to fully kit yourself in the shortest amount of time. With a full squad efficiently looting, you can reliably start rotating within the first minute of landing on the map. Oh wait, I forgot an evil harvester. One second. Got it! Wait, wait, there's a team over here! Help! Help! Having a routine landing will avoid situations like this, and also help you as we get to the main portion of this topic. You're finally ready to leave your POI. You know what you can play. You have every tool you could gather. Let's head out. Wait, are we forgetting something? We know where we're starting, but where are we going? The ring decides every single rotation you take in Apex. Where exactly are we supposed to rotate to other than the ring? As soon as the first ring pops onto the map, your team has to determine two things. One, where is the ring ending? Two, how can you get to that ending? Ring predicting is an entire art form in Apex, and it takes a lot of experience in the game to know where a specific ring is most likely to end. In general, the more you play on an Apex map and experience endgames, the more you'll recognize patterns in rings. Like how rings tend to keep pulling in the same direction when the second ring touches the first, or how certain POIs are favored for pulls when they are inside of the ring. But once you have an idea of where it's going to end, you have to find out how you're going to get there. And the first way of figuring that out is knowing what priority you have to the ring. Let's slap you down on a map and place the final ring here, then draw a line between you and that ring. Then let's also mark where the teams around us landed, and draw the same lines for them. How far away are you from the ring compared to them? This is priority. The teams closest to a ring end are teams with higher priority to an end zone, making it easier to reach game winning positions early in the match. The priority gets lower and lower the farther out you go, which will make it more likely you'll have to fight off other teams to find a place in the ring. Landing spots, looting times, priority, playstyles, you finally have everything that you need to understand how to rotate. With all of these pieces of knowledge crammed into your head, you can now find yourself in the best position for an endgame. Congratulations! But we're not done yet. What, you thought rotations are just for the macro? There's another very important part of the game, one that's harder to study and easier to experience. The smaller half of the macro, the micro. The micro is your decisions and rotates in the smaller moments of an Apex match. How you move through the rings in the late game. Where you go in a team fight. The positions you decide to take in these situations are your micro rotates, and they are just as important as the macro when trying to win. 
but they're also not as easy to talk about. I don't like to say it's just game sense. It isn't, but a lot of microplay depends on pure experience playing the game. One microplay may be a great idea in one game, but terrible in another. It comes down to you recognizing these things in the moment to moment to really get good at microplay. The micro is also why IGLs are so important, the in-game leader of a match. With an average game of Apex looking like, well this, having a single player direct the action helps to keep the team focused in one direction instead of looking like a bunch of helicopter seats. But what if you want to be that IGL? First things first, congratulations! You have done the equivalent of becoming the dungeon master in a friend group. You'll never be able to stop IGLing again. To get better at the micro, spend more time analyzing the decisions you make in a game. Work with coaches to build up your knowledge of in-the-moment actions, and try to communicate whenever you can in a match with callouts or information. To cap off all of the knowledge we've gathered today, let's dive into a historic match in Apex Legends and analyze the rotation of the team that won it. The final game of the ALGS Year 3 Championships, where TSM won in match point in 8 games. We're landing on the map of Stormpoint, pre-season 19, where TSM are landing at Wall. Immediately, they have a set looting path each of them takes to clear the POI, before seeing where the zone would end up appearing. Zone no, Zeros again. I think we go for the hill, the, the building on the hill. TSM's IGL is Imperial Hal, and he believes the zone is ending right on their doorstep here, just on this zip building outside the POI. This is a high priority zone for them where they can take the best spot as soon as they finish looting. And they do take that building very early on, and then they wait, and wait, until they realize the zone is not ending on them. Yikes. TSM didn't have a ring console at their POI, or else they would have known that this zone actually ends at Thunderwatch. This is a classic missed zone call, one that can ruin a game, but TSM has enough experience and knowledge of the game to make it work. They may have lost their high priority to the ring, but TSM knew that they could wrap the north side of the map late and come in from the zone to take a spot in either the northern green builds or in front of the spider caves. They see a team at the green builds and take the spider caves instead. TSM take a good position inside the ring, but they also have the benefit of knowing that another team could mirror the rotate they made and ruin their game. Despite knowing that, TSM actually failed to stop a team from making that very rotate into them as the dojo wrapped the north side and forced their way into TSM's space. I wonder if we go to that one... Wait. I think I just heard somebody. Yeah, yeah, there's people on my ping, there's people on my ping. 100%. Team down here. Yep. Wait, wait for his left corner. Kill yep. that fucker, he's by himself. Oh, I rise off of them all. Yeah. Let's hold you. One squeak, I think. One of my guys is right by my right. You can play up here. Yeah, yeah, you can play up there. Come back, come back, come back, come back, come back. Just play back, play back, watch our back. Go watch our back. I have no more bats. This was bad for TSM, but now we can transition from the macro to the micro and showcase the important decisions they made during this fight with the dojo. Initially, they are back down the hill of the caves after the fight stalled out but Hal calls for his squad to hold space closer to the platform Dojo is staying on, which leads to a moment remembered fondly as Enemy forgetting its Digi Day. Enemy, you're by yourself, I'll open kills. Give it 20 kills! Oh, 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 Sorry. I forgot to pin. Yep. Come in, bring that. Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! With that wipe, TSM now had to make their way into the next ring. It was a short distance, but a team had already taken the only safe spot closest to them. This meant that they had to cross an open gap to fight them for it. This moment shows a great example of something you can learn in microplay. Utility. Anytime you want to engage in a fight or move inside the ring, using your utility should be the first and foremost tool to do it. There are a lot of tools in the game to use, and TSM uses theirs to make this cross. Imperial Hal uses Horizon Ult to stall the team from cutting their path off. Verholst puts down a wall that blocks any other team from disrupting their walk-up. And Reps uses Smokes and Bang Ults to prevent their opponent from openly challenging them. All this utility makes this micro-rotate into a micro dubberino What the hell did I just say? The game ain't finished yet. TSM may be in a fantastic spot, but a crucial call in the endgame had to be made to secure a victory. Here's a pop quiz. Looking at these positions on the map, where should TSM push up to? This truck on the right side of the squad, or this fence line further down to the left? Put your comments in now! If you said the truck, congratulations! You're now a death box. 
The fence line may be on lower ground, but by controlling the fence, they control a majority of the space within the ring. And TSM sliding down to the fence ensures nobody can wrap the open ground onto them. This is the final decision TSM made that led to this. Apex folklore once again repeating itself as hell. Once again from the heavens gets the opening knock. The CEO with a hostile takeover. TSM are your champions. the bread and butter of Rotates. The decisions you make from the knowledge you've gathered in the game, the paths you treaded throughout every match you play, and knowing these parts of the Rotate will help you chart your paths in future games with more confidence than ever before. But great Rotates can't be made without mistakes. Keep playing Apex, learning about the space you play in and the players in it. And one day, you'll be able to fully appreciate the art of the Rotate. Oh, all right. I think I understand what we have to do now. Are you guys ready to rotate? Dude, we have been in the zone for several minutes. We're dead. Oh. Wanna do it again? Sure. <laughs>